everybody and welcome back to Adobe Illustrator for Cartographers. My name is Dr. Heath Robinson. This lesson I'm going to show you some special techniques for the representation of political boundaries. This is an effect that is on uh, many different maps that you see, but you just can't do it inside analytical GIS packages. So I want to show you how to produce some neat effects if you're trying to establish a distinction between countries or provinces or states or counties. You might want to use an effect like this in your cartography. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, see what we can produce. Before I started this video, I went ahead and put in some boundaries for the different countries here. I decided that I'm going to split this map here up into three different countries that I want to designate differently on my map. So I made a new layer, as always, called Countries. Let me turn it on so you can see it. I just put in some political boundaries. Now very, very important here is that here is the base land, just what you were looking at and then I put in the political boundaries. How are we going to represent political boundaries? Well, if you think about how we do political boundaries inside analytical GIS software, very, very infrequently, actually, do we represent political territorial units as just lines. You could, and there may be reasons why you do that, particularly analytical reasons in any particular analysis. But typically, when you bring in a file of uh, the countries of the world, for example, or the states of the United States, these things are not represented as lines, they are represented as polygons. Likewise with cartographic techniques, sometimes there might be situations where you just want to have the boundaries represented by lines. Other times, you do want to represent all of the different countries or political units, whatever they are, as polygons. And actually that's exactly what I've done here. So if I turn on the countries, it looks like I've just drawn two different lines. I've put a kind of political boundary that might follow some kind of natural feature here, and then I put in a geometric kind of political boundary that just follows a line of latitude down here. So it sort of looks like, though, when I just turn that on and off, that I just drew in those lines. Maybe in certain circumstances, that's what I want. If I'm trying to do something a bit more sophisticated with the actual political nature of the map, if I'm trying to represent political territory, then probably I don't want to just have that as some particular kind of line. But I might actually want to work with a kind of area symbology in order to designate these political units. So actually, that's what I've done. Each one of these is not just a line. I didn't just put in two lines here. I actually divided my base land up into, well, the mainland there into three different polygons. Let me show you that. If I just use my hard select tool, I'm going to grab this shape right here. You can see that it is not just a line, that that's actually a whole polygon that is that shape. I'm going to undo so I make sure that I get back to exactly, there we go, exactly back to where it's supposed to be. So you're not actually seeing any of the base land right now. If I turn off the base land and I turn off the countries, you get back down to my shallow water layer. So I'm going to turn back on the countries. So right now you're not even seeing the base land layer. You're just seeing this chunk of land that I carved up into different polygons based on its political features. You might be asking how I did that. I did that through the use of the Pathfinder tools. And I went ahead and decided not to show you that inside the video because we've been using the Pathfinder tools quite a bit, the shape modes inside the Pathfinder palette and so forth. All of them, really, and I wanted you to have an opportunity to practice with that. I'll give you a little hint that does involve drawing shapes and then copying the base land and pasting it in front and then using Pathfinder tools to chop up the shapes just so they very neatly fit. And that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to look like you couldn't tell the difference between the base land and the countries except for the fact that there were those lines. So I'm going to let you work with the Pathfinder tools if you want to replicate this method in order to produce those polygons. Now that I've got that, I can begin to use area symbology and some of my special effects to create my different ways of delineating the political territory. One way to do this is certainly just by solid colors. If I click over here, I could go into the fill color and I could come up with uh, a few different ways to represent the territory. I could come up with a, a real nice blue. Typically, the interiors are going to be lighter than the exteriors because you want the interiors to be lighter to be able to show up 
Uh, let me make it purple, actually. Already have the blue water, and I don't want these two to be confused. So what if I come up with a rather light purple? Maybe something like that to represent my first country. And then as a boundary, I can go over here and make it a much darker purple. Whoop, I didn't have my, bound my stroke selected. I'm going to do the same thing for the others. When I do a yellow, I'm typically going to use, not try to get a darker yellow, I'm going to get an orange to be my... Of course, the reason I want a lighter color on the interior than I want on the stroke is because I want whatever features I'm putting inside those countries to be able to show up very well. So if I use a lighter color on the interior, I'll be able to see any cities or the castle symbol that I put in there, or the rivers and the roads, whatever I put in there, much easier. So I didn't do the islands right now, but now I have three different territories. And this is a pretty reasonable way to do political territories. You've got three different colors representing three different boundaries. One thing I will point out, if I zoom in, in this particular situation it does not look like the purple country has a boundary. This is a potential problem, border lines about what exactly is going on at this particular line. That's probably not exactly what I want. I want the purple country to have a boundary as well. How can I do that really quick and easy? Just checking on my yellow country right here, I can see that it has a stroke of three. And if I zoom back in, you can see what's going on. That there is, that's, if I've done this right, uh, and I have because I've used the Pathfinder, that the boundary, the little stroke outline right here of the purple and the yellow country should be sitting exactly on top of one another. So if they both have an outline of three, I've got them sitting on top of one another and you're just not seeing the stroke because the orange is sitting on top of it. One thing I could do is see if increasing the stroke weight of that purple country there will help. I'm going to increase its stroke. Maybe now they look about equivalent. So what's actually going on is there's a, a, a purple line that's extending beyond here. Let me just delete the yellow country for just a moment. So you see what's happened. I'm making that line super thick so that it looks the same on the map. But that really isn't fixing my whole problem. Because now you can see even though it looks right here, I, well, I, oh, I got something to fix up there. But you can also really see that it's, it's making this line way too thick. It's making this way too thick. So that isn't going to help me. I'm going to undo there and return it back to its original thickness and try to think of something else to do. Let's work on fixing this problem. I'm going to slide up here. The problem is that this yellow country is laying on top of the purple country and it's overlapping here. We want this outline to be the dark purple right over here and then on this side of the line we want it to be the orange because it goes with this yellow country. I am going to first make sure that I have the yellow country copied. That way I can use the paste in front and I can always get back to exactly what this looks like. Now I'm going to use the object path outline stroke because that stroke has a thickness. Now Adobe Illustrator does not understand that as a yellow polygon with an orange line around it. It understands this all as polygons. And I believe it's all grouped together. So I'm going to ungroup. Yes, it is. And then I should be able to just select, yes, the yellow and delete it. Now you see that I have just that orange outline. That is sort of the culprit there. That's what I've got to work with in order to make this look right. So now I'm going to go paste in front. So I get another copy of that yellow country back sitting on top of just that polygon now of the boundary. And I'm going to turn off that color. So now you see I have the yellow country and I don't need everything that's showing. You see when I did that you can see the outline underneath the yellow country. I want that to be orange and I want to get rid of everything that is orange. So I'm going to take the yellow country and then select that path and I'm going to say intersect. I want to preserve the intersection of these two shapes. There. Take a look at that. 
now I can see the boundary of that purple country and I can see the boundary of the yellow country. Now it changed up the color in this particular aspect. I have it saved over here. I'm going to turn it, yeah, oh, okay, so make that the interior. No stroke. Aha, see that? There is that deep orange outline that I want. I'm going to say paste in front. I'm going to turn off the stroke of the yellow country and then I'm going to send it to back. Check that out. Now what I have is the yellow country with its orange boundary and then the dark purple country, the purple country with the dark purple boundary and the lighter color interior. And they're butting up right against one another and the thickness of the line is exactly the same. Let me zoom out. You can see that effect here. Maybe my line needs to be thicker. Maybe I should have made it thicker. That fixes a lot of problems. Uh, because of the way I did it, it should have also fixed the boundary between the yellow and the red. Let me zoom in. Yes, it did. So the red line is still thick, but it's okay because I've got the yellow sitting on top of it just the way it's supposed to be. So I've got the two different contrasting colors. Maybe it should have been a little bit thicker when I got started. Maybe I would look back at my map and say I needed a little bit thicker line. But hey, I think that looks pretty good, and I believe you've got the idea there about making sure that you've got the colors of both sides, the dark colors butted up against one another. I will show you one thing that I'm going to fix later. Let's, let's take a look at our frame. Okay, that does look pretty good. That's exactly how I want it to look. I was going to point out that if you didn't want this country to look like it ended, if I put that a uh, darker border around this country, it would look like that's the end of the country. But it's probably realistically not. This country might go up and, and do a whole lot more, and so are all the others. So I probably do not want that country boundary to butt up against my frame. I want it to do exactly what it's doing down here if that's not the edge of the country and so it looks like it's going off the frame. I'll show that to you a little bit more uh, as we do some other techniques. Okay, well I could certainly do the same thing with my islands. They're much easier because they don't have uh, the situation of the two political boundaries that are butting up against one another. So if this island belongs to purple I need to make swatches for those if I like these colors. Now it sort of looks like that island goes with that country, and who knows, maybe this is an independent country. Well, I could keep it green. If I'm going to keep it green, I probably actually in all cases want to make sure that I'm using a similar color lightness across all of my colors. That would be a great idea. Uh, yeah, that actually makes it look a bit more uniform. The actual, the, the purple looks a little bit dark. Do you see that? Uh, we could sort of mathematically find out a better way to do this, but for the moment, now that looks a little bit more uniform. It looks like all of these colors go together. They're about the same light shade, even though they're different colors, and they've got the edge around them of the color that they belong to. And uh, I think that's looking pretty good. So that's one way you can do political boundaries. I will show you an advanced technique next.